I built this amphibious jet bay with an ATV rear end and a dirt bike front forks, which fold up to decrease the drag on the water. It only had a lawnmower engine, so it didn't go very fast on water, but still worked really well on the land. I tried a few different setups. Totally bent the transom. Then a subscriber gave me a jet pump out of a jet ski, so I built an intake for it and coupled it to a CBR 600 engine. While waiting for the carburetor parts, I parked it up where it sat for another two years. I think these uh, back wheels are locked up. Let's see if I can free the brake up. Luckily I covered the motor. I take off the carburetors and replace everything with a rebuild kit that I bought ages ago. I don't really like this whole setup I've got going on here. I mean, I'm sure it will work, but this is all out of a line a little bit, and I think the sprocket is going to have too much force pulling on this shaft, and it's going to misalign the whole jet pump. I'm going to rethink this whole area and start taking it apart. I've got that all apart now, ready to be modified. I've moved the whole thing into my massive shed. Get some of this jungle off it. I do a few small jobs before I do the drive shaft. Just another little job out of the way, welded up that hole. I've got to do one on this side as well because the water gets flicked through there from the wheels. I cut this piece out of the swing arm to clear the jet pump when the wheels are down. This handle winder is too slow so I weld a socket on that allows me to use my rattle gun. This will move much more easily when it's in the water. That seems faster. So this is the complicated steering system. I had to have it like this because this front wheel's got to raise and lower, like so. So it goes fast on the water. I want to use a steering wheel this time, so I found this Toyota Hilux steering rack in the scrap bin. I take off the old linkage system and cut and weld the steering rack to work how I want. So I've rearranged the steering rack to how it should be. I mean clearly Toyota doesn't know what they're doing. This is how it should be. That might work, but she's a bit floppy. Might see if I can put another brace on here, but let's just see if the front wheel wall is still lift up. Ah, oh, just perfect. Perfect. That actually works really good. They also throw away the universals that fit onto here at work too, so I need to grab some of those and I'll run that back on a shaft. I don't know if I'll use the steering wheel, but the steering wheel will be around here somewhere. One slight problem, there's a little bit of sideways movement here. Uh, maybe I can 3D print a bush or something around there to centralize it, but it seems to be all right. But once again, Toyota, you could have made it better. I mean, you must expect people are going to cut 90% of the rack off and still expect it to work fine. I just had to move the motor back to get this apart. So I can take the sprocket off and move it over this way further. So that's the shaft for the jet pump that it plugs into the impeller. I'm going to thrust bearing here, uh, not a thrust bearing, a roller bearing. So that can take an axial load that runs on this surface here. I was running it here, but there's no reason I can't run it back here further. That way I can put the sprocket on this side, so it'll be much better supported between the two bearings. I need to make a freewheel sprocket, so I machine down this roller. Then I throw up the sprocket carrier, which I cut off the old setup, then bore it out to fit the roller. So 
So that sprocket carrier is almost done. That's going to sit there. I need to support the other end of it. I also need reverse. A guy at work gave me this little gearbox where it free spins and then when you pull this lever it drives. So I can put an electric motor on here and that can go into there and that, that sprocket carrier will run on there. So let's find a way of mounting this. I can't even find any mounting holes on this thing. I don't know how they had it mounted. I might have to tap these out. But I've done these exhaust pipes. I changed it from going straight under the engine to sideways. That was an absolute mission, actually. I've moved the motor back. Let's bolt her on and maybe see if we can do a startup, eh? Look how far this is off from the welding. I'm going to have to manipulate this a bit to get it to fit. Back to the good old straightening tree. I finally got those exhausts fitting on there. It was like literally two hours of hammering and beating trying to get it to fit. But I've been looking around and I can't find my 10mm socket to do the bolts up. Wait a minute. So I weld a socket on that allows me to use my rattle gun. <gasps> no! Yeah, the scrap bin provides again. Oh, what? Uh, it's too small. Uh, I wonder how hard this is. I know what y'all are thinking, how's that going to grip onto here if I've drilled the spline out but uh, I've ground a slot in here where the bolt will go through because the diameter is bigger here, it's closer to the bolts. Anyway, it's going to work, just trust me. I've made this little aluminium boss that I've just tacked to the steering wheel. So I'm going to weld it on and I'm going to have to cool down the steering wheel so I don't melt it. The 3D printer has just made me some parts, that's rather nice of it, and let's put these together. That bearing's mounted, I've just got a flat bar strap that's holding it, pretty good, but we've got heaps of steering play due to the flop in here. I have to have this at this weird angle so it's close in line with this pivot point, otherwise when it rotates up it'll get all messed up, so that's why it's on an angle like that. So let's 3D print some packers. That's great. I wonder what this thing's going to go like. Just trying to shut straight in this main shaft here. Way out. So I'm tacking spots around here and I'm trying to get this somewhat lined up. This is only going to spin at 12,000 RPM, so it should be close enough. Now I've got the uh, jet pump shaft set up in the drill press here. Just trying to true this sprocket up. It's starting to get pretty close. I ended up just welding it where it was because the dial gauge had nothing to run on smoothly. This is a bit out of round. And then I machined this back with the lay that worked.
So that's just a socket welded on there that a nut slides into. Should be able to handle a fair bit of torque. I wonder how much torque. Hmm. I've mounted the radiator and I'm just about to mount the oil cooler here. We've got a clutch in here now. Uh, there will have to be a guard made around this exhaust because it's probably likely I'm going to be driving it in bare feet once I'm on the water. Yeah, that's good. So all the wiring's just chilling out on the ground. Got this dodgy fuel tank, it's not a proper fuel tank. No gear lever, no throttle, no muffler, no floor, no guarding, no seat. Probably about time for a test drive actually. my tripod it was already broken now it's really broken so obviously that's just first gear idling there's six gears so don't know how fast it goes what not that fast but but you don't really want to with three wheels on a dodgy boat heaps more stuff to do as far as controls and everything i'm gonna have to brace the boat up because it's twisting thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one